Welcome everyone to the Sunday Mass, a ministry of the Passionist community. And before we begin our Mass this week, I would just like to share with you some information about our online Mass. In recent years, uh, you have begun to experience, first of all, ads during the Mass, and then eventually over the last year, commercials interrupting the Mass. I know many of you have been frustrated with this, and so have we. And we've looked very hard to find a solution for this problem, and I think we found one. In December, we signed a contract with the Vimeo hosting service. Uh, and so beginning with our Christmas Mass, on our website, the Mass is hosted by Vimeo, which means there are no ads and no commercials. The Mass will still appear on the YouTube channel, but you'll have to deal with how YouTube presents the Mass. But if you would like to watch it uninterrupted, no commercials, no ads, all you have to do is go to our website, thesundaymass.org, and there you can watch it without commercials or ads uninterrupted. We hope this helps, uh, and we thank you for being part of the Sunday Mass faith community. Have a great celebration today and a great week. Welcome everyone to our celebration of the Sunday Mass, a ministry of the Passionist community. It is September 8th, the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. So if you're using a prayer guide, take it out, turn to the beginning of Mass, and let us begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And as we gather to enter into these mysteries of our faith, let us first pause and prepare our hearts by asking God's forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to the gift of everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved daughters and sons, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground 
springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. fidelity forever who does justice to those who are oppressed it is he who gives bread to the hungry the Lord sets prisoners free A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, to the district of the Decropolis. The people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hands on him. Jesus took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears, and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned, and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open." And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. You know, throughout the scriptures, uh, we often hear, uh, and even in today's scriptures, we hear it that we must lose in order to gain. We must die in order to live. We must be lost in order to be found. We must be last in order to be first. 
We must be poor in order to be rich, blind in order to see, deaf in order to hear, lame in order to walk. You know, and and I was thinking about those things, particularly in terms of our scriptures today. Because sometimes when we hear those things from Jesus or the prophets or some of the New Testament writers, it's sort of like, how do we do this? Uh, Why does God make it so complicated from time to time? And then I ran across this little story about Michelangelo. And apparently he was working in his studio or his workshop one day. He had just begun a piece out of a large piece of granite. And a little young boy was passing by and stuck his head into the room. And he looked at Michelangelo pecking away at this stone. And he said, what are you doing And Michelangelo turned around, very excited, and he says, you mean you can't see? And the little boy says, see what? All I see is a stone. Michelangelo said, come over here, and he picked the little boy up, and he put him on his workbench, and he said, now look there. There's an angel trapped in that stone, and I'm just chipping away all the things that aren't the angel." so that we can see and be inspired by him. You know, I think, in a way, if we think of Jesus, if we think of the prophets like Isaiah we heard in the first reading, or even the Apostle James in our second reading, these are people who sort of chip away at us. They chip away the things that sort of hold us back from letting God be God. Uh, And, and, you know, today Jesus chips away at the man who can't speak and who can't hear. Uh, And he does that often. He he sees something more in that person. And he's sort of chipping away what's holding them back, what's not allowing them to be part of the whole community. If we think of Isaiah today, you, you know, he's describing that there are some echoes of our journey through Advent today in that reading. He's describing this beautiful world to a people who are in exile, who have lost everything. Again, he's chipping away, helping them to be hope-filled people, people who believe in God. James, as he writes to his community, is chipping away helping them to know what the journey of faith is all about. And I think every Sunday we have the same thing happen to us. Jesus, Isaiah, James, and many, many others chip away, hopefully exposing the gift of God that we are so that we can live the journey of faith to the gift of eternal life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life the world to come. Amen. And let us pray with confidence to God, whose faithfulness and mercy is everlasting. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. As we prepare to remember the 23rd anniversary of September 11th, we pray for all who died that day, for their families and friends who continue to mourn their loss. We pray for all who continue to struggle with or have died from illnesses, diseases, and emotional difficulties related to the events of that day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With schools beginning a new year, we pray for all teachers and students that they may be touched by the wisdom and knowledge that comes from Christ, the eternal teacher. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our Sunday Mass faith community that will be placed next to the altar, and for Susan Cerrone and Jason Cerrone, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. God of compassion and hope, hear the prayers we have spoken, those we have we will place next to the altar and those you have found in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Friends in faith, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who gives us the gifts of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise you for your mighty works through Christ. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Oh. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our bishop, and all whom you call to the ministry, service, and mission of your church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we humbly pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And let us share that peace with one another. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the, of the world. world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. And may our good and gracious God bless us this day and always. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth and continue to proclaim the gospel with our life. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. And thanks to all of you for joining us today for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. Special thanks to our ministry team for leading us and helping us to celebrate and pray today. As was mentioned in our prayer of the faithful, uh, this Wednesday is the 23rd anniversary of the events of September 11th. And so please know that we here at the Sunday Mass hold all uh, in prayer that still struggle with the events of that day. Uh, and also this Saturday, uh, September 14th, is the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, a very, very important feast in our congregation as Passionists. Uh, so if you could offer a prayer for us as Passionists that our mission and ministry might continue. And, and please know you will be in my prayers uh, specifically that day. Have a great week, everyone, and until we meet again next Sunday, may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in our hearts. Amen.